A quick note before we begin, I have a Discord which is linked in the description and the CC sheet is also out at bit.ly slash wildscaleshomework. This is part 2 of the high risk operator guide for CC6 wildscales, focusing on casters, specialists, snipers and vanguards. I've covered guards, medics, defenders and supporters in my previous video, so click the link on the top right corner if you haven't seen that. Let's jump right into the casters. Aya Fiala is used only for her skill 3 and she's seen very prevalently in week 1 due to the unrestricted towers. In week 2 however, her use case substantially decreases due to the more restrictive nature of the towers. However, there are still a non-insubstantial amount of clears that use her in order to work around certain mechanics or deficiencies such as not having seal thrash. Her arts nuke in week 1 is perfectly situated to take care of both the top trash and the bottom duelist crocs and she solidly earns her spot in the arts nuke team. Next up, we have Ifrit, who's used for her skill 3, however there are some fringe situations where her skill 2 is used. Skill 3 is used primarily on this town due to the fact that it can hit the top and the bottom side, alongside stacking debuffers such as Saria skill 3 to kill the croc right before it reaches the blue box. There are also a bunch of clears that use her on field at all times in order to deal with the top trash that gets bunched up by a defender, typically Saria. Needless to say, her defense strat works very well with other arts burst units such as AF Yella and Kyobi. Moving on to Kyobi, of course, she's a great contender in this CC as well due to the fact that she has extremely high sustained physical burst and also because she synergizes really well with one of the enemies on this stage. The Takua Braves or the Dwellers Crocs are balanced around reducing their own defense and the defense of the target that's blocking them, but since in this CC you aren't actually blocking them most of the time, their defense is at base 1000 which does help a lot in Kyobi's talent. In week 1, she's often cycled with AF Yella to take care of the bottom side Dwellers Crocs, however in week 2, she sees basically no use due to the more restrictive nature of the towels. In essence, casters see substantial amounts of use in week 1 as the second best option for min-max strategies and the best option for the general player. However, in week 2, their performance drops drastically and almost no strategy uses them as a core in higher risks. Moving on to specialists, there's a lot of them and all of them see some amount of use in high risk or at least risk 30 plus. Weedy is a unit that doesn't see a ton of use in high risk, however she has been seen in some risk 32 strategies where she's used to kill the last infiltrator by pushing it away. Sadly, she's nowhere as relevant as she was in previous CCs, however she still at least deserves a spot on this list. In week 1 however, she can pull off some extremely interesting shenanigans and I featured one of them in my map and enemies guide linked in the top right corner where she, with the help of Angelina's skill 3, is able to push one of the Dwellers Crocs down the middle hole. Next up, we have Ark which is a core unit in most of the clears. Reasoning being is that he enables Silverash to deal with the top side enemies much more effectively. With the aid of Ark, Silverash is able to take care of one of the Crocodile casters which is incredibly helpful, seeing as the other can be pulled into the middle hole. The vast majority, 90 plus percent of risk 30 plus clears use Silfrash and of course it's natural to pair him with Ark otherwise he barely leaves the caster alive and forces you to come up with a different strategy. On the topic of the caster crocs, Gladia is the best option to deal with them due to their pathing and how she's easily able to hook them into the hole with all three of her skills. Initially, her skill 1 was used because it was simpler but then it was optimized out in favor of skill 2. However, there are a couple of clears that shoehorn her skill 3 in there. It's hard to overstate how strong Gladia is in this CC because of the caster crocs immense range and getting them into the hole before they actually come near the blue box enables you to only need one bait cycle when they initially appear at the top side. Some clears also like to use Gladia to help with the infiltrators when they come along the bottom lane because that's where she sits to 1 stay away from the sandstorm and 2 pull the caster crocs down the hole. It's important to note that in higher risks, the more commonly used Gladia skill is skill 2, so if you're only going for a singular M3 on her, that's what I'll recommend, plus it's also the best skill for general usage. Following Gladia, we have Phantom, who's a less obvious choice. He's occasionally seen in clears to bait the caster crocs attacks, and his skill 3's push potential is very useful when dealing with the last infiltrator at the bottom side. However, a lot of other operators can somewhat substitute for his use, although he's the one that causes the least port gating. If you're trying to do max minus 1, which is the highest you can possibly go without a lot of max potentials, Phantom is one of the easiest operators to cut out or to replace if you don't have him. Lastly, for the specialists, we have Kafka. 
She's usually only seen in Max Risk in order to pair with Mudruck and Texas to store the last Duelist Crocodile. It's not much to be said about her besides that other than the fact that one clear uses her at E0 skill level 4 for the less DP cost, but another clear uses her at E2 max. Following the specialists, we have the snipers which arguably speaking are the strongest class in this CC. Ken the Balanced is easily the strongest operator in this CC owing to her strength in week 1 and her utter dominance in week 2. A slowing feud just makes her incredibly strong for the Duelist Crocodiles when they come at the bot side, especially when it affects 5 towers. And the tower restrictions in week 2 help her more than anything by allowing her to be the sole DPS for top side while contributing DPS to the bottom side. I think a lot of Chen Alter's kit is self explanatory and you can easily see why she's so strong in this CC. So, a fun fact is that her S3 slow field actually affects the invisible crocodiles which is pretty useful if you're going for that risk. After Chen Otter, we have Ash and Schwartz, both of which fulfill the same role, and there's a slight edge given to Ash in that regard. The role they fulfill is killing the Duelist Crocodiles at the bottom side, or rather contributing to Chen Otter's DPS in that regard. Talking in the context of Max-1 or Max-2, i.e. Risk 31 or 32, Ash is substantially more popular than Schwartz, however there are still a bunch of very very clean Schwartz clears made by Sweep specifically. Ash's stun paired with Texas's stun along with Warfarin is just such a potent choice, however most clears you'll find on Billy are based on Ash. Lastly we have Vanguard which you'll likely be bringing 4 off in this CC. An honorary mention not on this list here would be Zima because she also supplements Texas' role to an extent. One key thing I've mentioned in my map preparation video which you should check out in the top right corner is that the starting DP is 5 as opposed to 10 or 11 from the previous CCs. This means that you aren't able to place on a flag bearer instantly and having Texas would help substantially in that regard. The early rush also starts immediately and doesn't give you a ton of room to maneuver so Mirto plus backpipe is almost essential if you're going for higher risks. DP stays a persistent issue throughout the entire run such that I believe CC6 max risk is the most pot gated CC in recent memory which is a fair accomplishment considering CC5. Of course the Vanguard's primary purpose is to generate deployment points so I'll be talking more about their specialized roles outside of that. Backpipes plus 6 or plus 8 SP to all vanguards is incredible here as it is in any CC. She serves very well to hold off the first rush of the trash mobs until they get redirected by the fighter croc breaking the sand mount. Daga serves a similar purpose, however she's also usually brought alongside Backpipe to have a 5 vanguard squad. Some clears that utilize Backpipe and Saga to clear out the trash when you're in between skill cycles, but there are also some that just use say Ash or just time charter skill more effectively. Texas's instant DP on heli drop with bagpipes potential 5 is great and she also serves to enable Ash in killing the duelist croc in the blue box. Lysium is great as always because his skill 2 has a slow and a reveal both of which are extremely potent in dealing with the duelist crocodiles as they have a risk that makes them invisible while slowing them down also allows your charter to land more hits on them. Last but not least we have Miyato whose 8 initial deployment cost allows her to be deployed in only 1 second if you have an E2 Texas and start generating DP within 1 second as well if you have a P5 backpipe. That's part 2 of the high risk CC operator guide and I'm sorry it took so long some real life issues came up along with the Path of Exile leak launch. Have a great day.